early days, mid 19. 75 somebody brings a ham radio to the farm so we have a few guys that know how to do the ham radio so we're getting on the international circuit no internet yet you know we got typewriters you know we got CB radios and we got ham radios whatever technology is available we've got it because we're <laughs> we like our technology and, and uh, and so the ham radio guys are tooling around and they hear on the, we started hearing reports of this big earthquake in Guatemala, 1976, February 4th, massive, seven point plus, thousands killed, huge. And we're getting first hand reports because of the ham radio. So we decided, you know what? We should be down there to see where is Guatemala, by the way, you know? And uh, so I flew down w with my wife, uh, who, was, who spoke Spanish and was a medical person. And we landed in this incredible place uh, where all the, uh, everybody in uniform is carrying a, a live weapon. Um, and then we meet the Mayans, who suffered most of the casualties from the earthquake. We end up spending four years in Guatemala doing, helping rebuild towns and schools. Uh, the, the Mayans ask, of course we end up with the Mayans. But we start to understand too the politics of poverty. Say so these people aren't just poor because they don't have jobs. <laughs> they're oppressed. They've been, a, oh they're indigenous peoples. Oh. So we start understanding something that we was completely new to us. Indians, uh, military dictatorships, cruel, murderous military dictatorships. And, uh, and, and so we're bringing in the technologies that we're learning to survive here. Soybean for protein, midwifery, primary health care, communications. We set up FM radio for the Mayan Indians in this one big town. And, uh, and, and so we're helping them with, and water systems. Realize these people aren't hungry just because they're, they're not getting enough protein. They've got so much intestinal parasites because of the water that they drink. Uh, and they don't have access to clean water. So. We're understanding the kinds of technologies that we can assist with. And meanwhile, we're absorbing all this incredible culture of this people that, you know, is thousands of years old, makes us feel like babies. Plus, we have the same religion, you know. <laughs> we go, hey, Mayans and not, we all think, we think the same, you know. Uh, so we're like, all of a sudden, we're all dressing ourselves in Mayan traje, and, and we're bringing Mayans up to the farm. We had a hundred Mayans o up here over that period that we got in here on different visas so they could live on the farm and learn some of our stuff. And we're living with them and eating with them, and uh, we, a few of us married Mayans, and we're adopting Mayans, you know, so there was this whole integration of hippies and Mayans. It was a beautiful thing. But this was really where Plenty sort of went to graduate school in the field of development and what you can and can't do and how you, how you do stuff. In, in every project that we've done, there's been a connective tissue or a connected person within that culture. Oftentimes it's kind of a key family who really has a vision of wanting to help do some work in that community. We plug in with that family or that group, and then we've got leverage, to, and, and then we stay. We don't parachute in, dig a well, and leave. We stay, and we stay so long that after a while we're getting invited to the weddings and the funerals, and you know, we know that that way we have really gotten to a place where projects have some hope of sustainability and it's no longer our project as plenty it's now a partnership that's what I like to see when we get a partnership going because then 
those people do other projects and do other projects and, and it spreads. Uh, you do stuff and from there uh, we've had projects in the South Bronx, throughout the Caribbean, we're, we're, today we're working in Belize, we have a project on the farm where we bring kids out of the city down here in the summertime, kids of the country where you know they can ride horses and, and have gardens and um, working at Pine Ridge. We've continued to work with Native Americans since that time. After we met the Mayans, we realized that you know, the Indians are at the bottom of the pecking order, wherever they are. Plus, they're living in the most threatened ecosystems and are the best protectors of those. So if we can help keep these cultures alive, it also helps the environment and so forth. So um, that was some of the kinds of things with that, that we were learning and We've gotten support from a incredibly faithful, not a big number, but a few thousand faithful donors that m make possible everything that we do as plenty. And these are people that share our values and uh, they, they want to see, you know, small is beautiful kinds of operations, village scale, small stuff that where they can see exactly what their support is doing. And, uh, you know, there are over the course of this last 30 plus years that we've been doing plenty, I've seen a million plenties or plenty like th things pop up like mushrooms all over the planet which is in, a beautiful thing to see and that that that's the most one of the most hopeful things that I see is that there are so many people that are taking the initiative uh, and it'll take all of us and then some and uh, but this you know I've been blessed by being able to do this kind of work uh, and and I got into it uh, at the beginning um, and I think partly because I got a tick bite and got Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever back in 1974 and was re recovering from, you know, like a four-day coma and everything. <laughs> and, uh, and was not, didn't have a full-time job at, at that time. And uh, so I got picked to, to uh, help with plenty at the at that very early stage and then have stayed with it ever since because there's nothing I'd rather do but it it you know our we've always seen that uh, the work that we do uh, in plenty and our other nonprofits like Peace Roots the midwife training project uh, Stevens Rosinante project elderly care um, the uh, uh, Swan Trust, our land trust organization, that all these things tie together and, and are what keep the community strong. In other words, the, the, I th truly believe that the farm, as, as a community, we needed the outreach programs that we did. We needed to stay out on the cutting edge. Uh, and and, uh, and the Eco Village Training Center is another uh, nonprofit that uh, keeps us in touch with people like yourself, other communities. Um, you know, we want to be relevant. We like being relevant. We like being in the mix. And uh, 